Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground is brought to you by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. I started curling in, in 1956 and I've been curling ever since through 2010. So far I'm still going strong, I guess. In 1956, I guess I curled at a Paul Bunyan bond spiel. I'd come down with my dad and there was a team that was short of players, so they asked if I would curl and that's how I got started. I was on a team and we actually won, I think, the third or fourth event. I won a blanket back then, so I can still remember it. I have a picture at home, as a matter of fact. Back in 1956, the club was downtown on Urban Avenue, but it was natural ice then. We don't have the artificial ice like they have now, so it was really some slow ice compared to now. You would come down there on a cold weekend in the middle of January or something, and I'll tell you, there'd be frost on it. You'd have to throw that rock as hard as you could to get it down. And you could never, it was never the same from one day to the next where this natural or artificial ice is now. And what a difference that made for curling. It's really enjoyable. Well, it started in uh, 1936, came to Bemidji. Hibbing had got it in 1913. They were forerunners. Came to Bemidji and it was in a two-sheet building down around where, uh, where Senex is located right now. And I don't know the exact location, but it was right down around 2nd Street. It was a two-sheet. Then it moved there, moved up to the, and attached itself to the skating rink, which is where Northland Apartments is at. And that was actually a separate uh, building, although it was attached to the, to the skating rink. And it stayed there till 1967, and the city said they wanted to uh, build a, uh, a government housing type, uh, financed by government housing uh, dollars down there, and they would give us the land to come here and attached to the skating ring. That was 1967, I believe. I wasn't here, but that's what I've been told. So we, uh, we, uh, we built the building, paid for the building on the city land, which you can have. And then uh, shortly after that, the skating or the curling club gave it to the city. So it's kind of under their umbrella, you might say. I uh, actually curled one time uh, back in the uh, 50s when I was going to college. I don't remember much about it, but I remember the old, uh, the old rink down there, and I remember I uh, curled for the Bemidji Woolen Mills. We had these beautiful jackets, Eisenhower-type jackets and matching hat. It was very nice. And then I went uh, and did my thing for 30-some years, and it came back in 91, so I've got uh, about 20 years in uh, since that time. Oh, I think meeting all the different curlers from different clubs and our own, you know, watching them progress and, you know, curling against some of these people, like the Paul Bunyans coming up, you meet a lot of Canadians and they, they invented the sport, so to speak. I mean, they come down and they'll make shots that you don't even anticipate trying yourself. You know, try them and make them. So it's been a real pleasure to curl against that type of curler. But we've had some good ones here, so the fact we've been able to curl the Scotty Bears and the Lopsucks and some of these Pete Fensons, you know, you've, you've grown up with these champions around us, so you do have a little higher playing field here, I think, than probably some other clubs. I did watch my dad. He was from Duluth, and I didn't know until he passed away. We were digging through some of the uh, paperwork, and he'd been a state, not a state, a club champion in Duluth. And I have curled here all my life, trying to be a club champion in Bemidji, and have never accomplished that. So when I see what he'd done when he was 18, 19 years old, it was amazing, because Duluth had a lot of curlers compared to Bemidji back then. But uh, yeah, so it's been in the family ever since uh, I've grown up with it. And it's a great pastime, good exercise, and great people to curl with. Guys like Buck are fun to be around when you're out there curling. Yes, I loved curling with my dad. It was always a thrill. I think he enjoyed the sport. Uh, and he was up in his uh, almost 79, I think, was the last year that he curled. And he was competitive. He'd come down here on Thursdays when we have uh, four draws, and sometimes he'd curl all four. And now when I come down, I curl twice. And I can't believe that he could do it four times. But he would do that. And it was just part of how physical he was, I think. And, that generation probably too, but we really love the sport and I love being with the old dad curling. Well, I'm competitive, <laughs> you know. I think we, uh, we like to have a good time, uh, but we understand you're gonna get beat. <laughs> you know what I mean? Some people don't maybe like that, but uh, we understand that uh, we're gonna be in a competitive situation when we get down with a stone in front of us, we wanna make the best shot possible. The climate up here is, is conducive. Uh, you're, we're sitting right next to a major skating facility, 
that uh, not only has a lot of figure skating, but young hockey players and in various, even the colleges even used it for a few times when they didn't have their ice uh, at that particular day. So, uh, yeah, this building was is important. The city uh, fathers like curling and are very uh, giving to us as far as the facility and everything. Yeah, I think uh, the exposure of the Olympics though really started at larger. You know, it's been here a long time, but I think that exposure of Pete Fenson winning our only Olympic medal in, for the United States was pretty, pretty important for it. To me, one of the most thrilling things that I saw, I had, I had wintered in Texas and we got back here uh, after uh, the Olympics and uh, the Nationals were going on here. We just got back in town. And so I got the in on about the last two days of the Nationals. And Lenny will remember this, the last rock thrown by Pete Fenson to win the national, went on the button, in the center of the ring. And that, and the whole place just burst, <laughs> you know, like, it was a pretty thrilling time to see an athlete perform like that. Yeah, I think he was pretty happy, but we were also happy. You know, one thing about, it, we get to curl against all those guys, you know, they're, they're in the leagues. We get to curl, we get to curl in this championship ice that they provide for us, so I think, uh, we're cl a lot closer to maybe our competitive curlers than, than you would think because we know them quite, quite well and have played with most of them. You know. Well, I think it's something that's been handed down from one generation to the next. And we've had so many good curlers. I mean, the uh, Bairds and the Halupsics and all these people that in the past have been state and national champions. Uh, and of course, the Johnson girls, Cassie and Jamie, that uh, Pete Fenson, that those people that had gone to the Olympics, I think it's just something that's passed down and uh, the future looks real good with the younger curlers coming up. I think the Midgie's going to continue to be a factor in the national curling. Well, I think it's pretty great to see him come up through the junior ranks. We just had the national juniors here. Just fantastic curling. I mean, when they, when they hit a stone, it was just by half an inch or so. Yeah, to see him develop young people uh, into uh, very fine curlers, yeah. And also to see their character develop. I think the character is pretty important in this game. Uh, what kind of athlete you are, you know, what kind of person. Oh, we We. Ooh, ooh. Okay, it's open. Wide open. Well, in conclusion, I guess it's a sport that I would recommend to anybody. I think it's uh, not only from the exercise, but the chance to meet great people and have a tremendous time out here. It's uh, a lifetime sport, something that'll be with most curlers until they can't hardly walk anymore. And the exercise and the, uh, the long winters we have, boy, they aren't as long when you have curling and have leagues like this. It makes it go by very fast. If you enjoyed this segment of Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground, consider making a contribution at lptv.org. If you have segment ideas pertaining to North Central Minnesota, contact us at legacy at lptv.org. Common Ground is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund by the vote of the people on November 4th, 2008.